What's up, Warrior Nation? Welcome back to the Warrior Rewind, where we take time to visit with members of the Valley Christian Athletics community, past and present. Once a warrior, always a warrior. This is your host, Rob Fair, VC Class of 2009, Assistant Athletic Director, and Warrior Football and Lacrosse Coach. I encourage you to connect with me on Twitter, at RobFair3, or email me at rfair at vcs.net to nominate a new guest that you'd like to hear from. You can find the Warrior Rewind just about anywhere podcasts live. But for this episode in particular, I encourage you to follow along on YouTube as today's guest contributed some throwback content you won't want to miss. Let's get to work. Tyler Mariucci graduated from Valley Christian High School in 2003. As a Warrior, Tyler played quarterback and would go on to lead the Warrior football team to its first CCS championship since Valley Christian moved into the new Skyway campus. Tyler would go on to play football at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and after finishing up his collegiate playing career, would return to Valley Christian to serve as a biology teacher, assistant athletic director, and assistant varsity football coach. From there, Tyler would go on to develop an impressive resume as an athletic director at several NCAA institutions across the nation. First, as a director of major gifts at Fresno State University, then as the Assistant Athletic Director for Development at the University of Memphis, then as the Associate Athletic Director for Sports Administration and Development at the University of Maryland, then as the Senior Associate Athletic Director and Chief Development Officer at the University of San Diego, and currently Tyler serves as the Associate Athletic Director for Development at San Diego State University and is the Executive Director of the Aztec Club. Tyler, thank you for, uh, for being on the Warrior Rewind. Uh, happy to be here today, Rob. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to play for you. I was a student when you were a coach and a teacher. And so, uh, so that's why from now on, I'm going to stop referring to you as Tyler, uh, because you will forever only be Coach Mariucci to me. Uh, so for the rest of this podcast, your first name is going to be Coach. Well, I appreciate that, Rob. You know, once a coach, always a coach. Um, and uh, those are some of the best uh, best years of my life was uh, coaching the Warrior football team. So I appreciate that. Thank you. No doubt. Uh, coach, what's it like moving all over the country, uh, being a part of the carousel that is college athletics? Well, it's a fun ride, uh, for one, and um, you get to meet a lot of interesting people, a lot of great people. Um, I've been fortunate to uh, travel all over the country and, and work in different parts of the country and, um, and, and be around some of our best and brightest uh, student athletes and, and get some great experience at each stop that I've made. It's a whirlwind. It's sun up to sundown uh, atmosphere, and uh, you know you enjoy every minute of it. It's, it's fast paced. It's it's high stakes. Um, everyone is very very competitive, um, trying to win, trying to graduate, and try, trying to graduate student athletes, and and trying to do it at the highest level. Uh, it's it's been a great ride, Rob. What would you say is the best part of being an NCAA athletic administrator? I think uh, the best part of being an NCAA uh, administrator is the the different experiences that you get um, on a daily basis and the different types of people you get to work with and the different types of people you get to impact and and you know all these all these things coming together and working towards a common goal and you know being able to impact student athletes and their you know educational experience it's not as direct, you know, you're not as directly involved with the student athletes per se as a coach, uh, but you are impacting, you know, what they do and how they're able to compete and how they can win championships and get a degree at a, at a, at a smaller and indirect level. And that's very rewarding. Awesome. Okay. Going back to the beginning of your athletic career at Valley Christian high school, you played at a time uh, before warrior field had stadium lights. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what was it like to play uh, instead of Friday nights, you, you played uh, your home games on Saturday afternoons. What was that like? 
You know, uh, the Warrior Campus, Skyway Campus is is one of the best, if not the best in the country. And, uh, you know, I got to take you back to a story with Coach Machado. It was my junior year, and we had just we had just won the BVAL championship, and, and we got ousted by Bellarmine um, in the playoffs in our first game, thanks to a, an interception by Tyler Mariucci. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we went into workouts that offseason, and Coach Machado brings – brings the team into a classroom there and, and tells us he's got a big announcement, big surprise. And he announces to the whole team that we're going to get lights next year. And the team went off. I mean, just erupted. And we thought that was the coolest thing. You know, of course, there was some neighborhood issues that they had to work out. So we did not receive the lights um, in my senior year, which was fine. Um, playing in the daytime, it, it's just, it's beautiful scenery. I think playing during the day, it was great experience. We had, it was so fun, Rob. We we had such great support from the school that year. And the students would come out, the administrators would come out. I think we were playing at a time where a lot of people could make the games and they did. And it, it made for a great atmosphere for us as players. And uh, it was just a great experience all around playing on that campus. What uh, what would you say was one of your best performances as the Warrior quarterback? <laughs> um, well, you know, as you know, I, I was the beneficiary of playing on a really good team. You know, I had good players um, that made up for my deficiencies and uh, and all of that. So I was very thankful for that. But we had a few games. Uh, where, where, you know, I think it was uh, Alvarez in, in the second game of the season. Uh, we, you know, we went to play that Tri-County team. It was pretty good. I think, I think they won their league the year before and were maybe top 15 in the CCS. And we were coming off a great 38-0 to win versus Hollister in our first game at San Jose City College. So we were pretty confident, but we weren't taking Alvarez for granted. And, you know, Coach – Coach Machado opens up the game, uh, triple option right, first play of the game, and wins 78 yards for a touchdown. And, uh, you know, I just remember when you're playing a non-WCAL school, I think they're a little bit under underprepared for our offense. You know, ball control, triple option offense, and our trap game and, and our run game. And it just worked really well against them that day. And, you know, when when Coach called his five to ten, five to ten passes, you know, I'd drop back and, and wide receivers were – you know, wide open, and uh, so I was able to get, you know, four touchdowns in that game. It was a fun game, and it really built our confidence going into that season. You know, us, you know, us kind of, you know, we didn't come out the gates ranked number one, or I don't even think we are in the top five, uh, but we started building our confidence in that game. And then there was a game, um, you know, we played Midi that year at Midi. I think they were top five in the state uh, before we played, and we went up 35-0 yes. in the half. I believe. And I mean, they had great players all over the field. Stephen Chang at middle linebacker, linebacker and uh, Danny Dressman at quarterback. And uh, they had this uh, other linebacker named Barrow, I think, played at Air Force. And, and we just stuck it to them and uh, threw a couple touchdowns in that game. And that was the one game I started calling audibles um, at the <laughs> line of scrimmage because they were running no safety because of our ball control run first offense. And, you know, it really worked. I will tell you this, Stephen Chang hit me so hard out of bounds. Um, not sure if I had a concussion or not, but don't remember the second half of that game. I don't think we scored another point after we went up 35-0, but we did. We, we, we either were – it was it was just a great game, and uh, um, that's when we really knew, hey, th this team is special. We can, we, can, we can do something real special this year for this school. You were definitely a part of uh, Valley Christian football history – before we had all the uh, the recognition and uh, and you know even the the household name um, that that we've become today, you were a part of that first group that uh, that mm -hmm. the program where we are today is because you know we stand on the shoulders of those who come before us and that's and right. You were definitely uh, you're definitely part of that group. Um, when you look back at uh, your playing days and even your you, when you were coaching at Valley. Um, what, uh, you look back at our offensive playbook, what is your favorite play and, uh, or at least what's the play you remember the most? 
Well, that's easy because uh, one of my best friends reminds me of it all the time. That's Kevin Jurovich. We, we remain really good friends to this day. And we talk about the hitch and go uh, that we ran uh, in the CCS final. And uh, I think it went for 40 yards for a touchdown. But let's get real, Rob. Anytime <laughs> coach, anytime coach Rashada would call a pass play or he'd call my number to run the option, I was loving it. Yeah. Because um, it gave me a chance to uh, – you know, showcase my skills and have some fun with it. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, I was a beneficiary of a great team. I was probably a great fit for Coach Machado's offense, you know, ball control, run first offense that ran the option. And, uh, and that gave me a chance to, you know, every time we had play action, you know, dropping back, I'm dropping back and there's wide receivers wide open all over the field. And, uh, you know, you put, you, you put, solid athletes at quarterback in that offense and you know our blocking schemes are sound when you're running that triple or veer option I mean it's usually wide open and it's it's going to the house and and that made it fun for me as a quarterback so yeah. uh, but favorite play I, I gotta say when when coach called a pass play and you knew it was just going to be wide open and it was going to the house yeah for sure okay how about this how about the play that you think you called the most Oh, that's a good question. Um, it was a run play, um, yeah. but it was. It's got to be. It's got to be open left, halfback, power right. You named it. Twenty-six power fullback and and open left, uh, halfback, power right. Right there. Those are the two I called the most in the huddle. Uh, it didn't matter if it was first, second, or third down. Uh, those worked really well for us um, when I was playing. We had a great offensive line we had two solid tailbacks and Chris Johnson and Ronnie Rogers and Matt Costello you know who had a cup of you know coffee with the Seattle Seahawks was right there in the backfield I didn't have to do much I called the play uh, I knew it was going to work and man we, we 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 pounded the ball down the opponent's uh throat and you know it usually worked out really well for us the cool part about having Coach Machado uh, been around the program as long as he has, Coach Scherenberg, um, is that uh, so much of Valley Christian football is timeless, whether it be 26 power fullback or 73 eagle. You know, the other thing to me that's timeless is the definition of what it means to be a warrior. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether it was uh, when you played in, in, you know, the early 2000s or now as, as we enter – the 2020s, yeah. what is, uh, to you, when you think of, of uh, a warrior, what does it mean to be a warrior? Yeah, great question. I, I think I was asked this about a decade ago, I was asked to come back uh, to speak to the team. And um, I think it was Coach Machado or either Coach Scherenberg asked me to talk about what it means to be a warrior. And, and I'll give the same answer today as I gave a, a decade ago. We were given so much um, at Valley Christian. All of us who, who, who walked through those doors and played on that field and and, and, and got to be around those administrators and teachers and, and all those people that cared for us, not only as, you know, athletes, but cared for us as human beings. They cared about our faith. They cared about what we were doing in the classroom. They, they cared about what we were doing on the field and, and all the resources the school has. Um, when you ha have an opportunity like that and you, you get to receive some, an experience like that in your lifetime, I think you have the responsibility to give it back, to give it back one day. And so to be a warrior to much is given, much is expected. And all of us who have, um, you know, graced that campus and been through those doorways up on top of that hill, I think we have a great responsibility to go out into the world and impact it in a really great way and impact it in a really positive way, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we choose to go into. So I think that's what it means to be a warrior too you know, to whom much was given, much is expected. And um, I think a lot of us, a lot of alums out there take that very serious. And, and, and we are very, very grateful for the experience we received as a Valley Christian warrior. The, the quest for excellence is a motto that, uh, that's prevalent uh, throughout, you know, the Valley Christian campus. Um, you talk about being a warrior, going out into the world. You've, uh, you've certainly had a career that's taking you across the nation from from Fresno to Memphis to Maryland and now San Diego um, you know that kind of being the quest that you've been on so far so when you think of the quest for excellence how is it that you would define the word excellence 
I think excellent in any field is, is, you know, using your God given talents and abilities, uh, to the best that you can use them to make a difference and to make it in a great way and to, and, and to do a great job at whatever you choose to do and to do it with passion and to do it with faith and to do it with hope and to, to, you know, we only get one life to, to give it your all in whatever area you choose uh, to go down. And, you know, like Dr. Doherty always says, excellence breeds influence. And those of us who get to go out and, and work hard and, and live out our dreams and do the best job we can with, you know, the abilities God given us, I think you, you can accomplish that. And then, you know, the responsibility ties back to the last question with that, with that accomplishment and, and with that drive and, and whatever bar you reach, whatever excellent bar or standard you reach to give back to those that are looking to do exactly what you're doing and help, help others along in their careers and in, in their life path. I uh, certainly know that you live out the words that you've shared because uh, you've spent some time giving back to me in my career and, and, you know, I had the privilege of, uh, of, Kind of entering into a mentorship with you um, as a part of my my graduate school as I was going to get my my MBA in sports management. Part of that was uh, was needing to 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 work with a professional in the field, and and you uh, you spent a lot of time letting me bug you and uh, and bother you and uh, and just kind of learn from you um, throughout that process. And so you know uh, I, I certainly am one benefactor of uh, of the excellence that you showed by by helping others so thanks for living out those words well i appreciate that rob that means a lot you know i, I remember that time you, you called me up I was, I was working at the university of maryland at the time in the big 10 and we were doing a lot of different things from you know transferring the school to the, from the acc to the big 10 and, and winning big 10 championships and, and building a 200 million dollar football facility and you know, it was really cool for me for a, a Valley Christian alum to reach out and say, hey, what the heck are you doing? How can you help me? And I was happy to help. And, and with your project, Rob, you were able to help me what I was doing um, at the school at the time. So I appreciated that. And uh, I think it worked out for both of us. It was a lot of fun, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Coach, what, uh, what is one thing that, that sport has done for your life that most people uh, you know, wouldn't expect. Um, there's so many natural benefits to, to athletics, whether it be just being physically active or the yeah. values of, uh, you know, teamwork and sportsmanship and all that. But, but what's something that most people wouldn't think of um, that, that sport has done positively in your life? I mean, there's a lot of things we can talk about what sport has done for my life that, you know, uh, we can talk all day about that, but something that's maybe unexpected is, I think when you play sports and, and you put your heart and soul into it and you compete and you want to reach the top or, or do the best you can, um, what it taught me is you can't do things alone. I mean, if you, if you want to be your best self, if you want to do it the right way, if, if you want to reach all your goals, you can't do it alone. You have to work with a team. You have to work with your coaches. You have to work with the authority that's above you at the time. Um, and, and no one is getting to the top, uh, without doing it, without a team, uh, without resources and people that care about them, um, surrounding them. And I think that's one thing that, uh, I think I take with me for the rest of my life with my experience as a, as a player is, uh, the best way. And the only, maybe the only way, the only way to the top is, is doing it with a team and doing it and, and, and not doing it alone. Sure. It's so true. You talk about, you know, in order to be your best self, you can't do it by yourself. So that's kind of the that's extrinsic, right. uh, you know, uh, fuel that helps you to strive to be your best self. But what, what coach, what intrinsically inspires you and, uh, and, and makes you strive to be that best self? Oh, uh, that's an easy question for me, Rob. My faith inspired my, my Christian faith inspires me to be my best self, you know, on a daily basis. And, uh, it's a continual, continual regeneration, right? Every day, because none of us are perfect and you got to wake up every day and look yourself in the mirror and, uh, we all fall short, right? So that continual regeneration, um, so my, my faith I, and to my wife, my wife, Jennifer, she's, she's an amazing person. Um, she just, she's, uh, 
I could go into it, but we're not going to get sappy today. But she okay. she definitely inspires me to be my best self. And I, I think if you ask any one of my family members, um, any one of my friends, uh, and, you know, people that have been around uh, us as a couple, they're going to tell you the same thing, that, yeah. that Jennifer is one of a kind. She's a wonderful person. And I'm very, very fortunate uh, to have her. Uh, so those two things, my faith and my wife, really inspire me every day to be my best self. And, you know, that really brings you full circle to um, the fact that you need a team. You know what I mean? And, and your spouse being your best teammate. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, uh, she is my greatest teammate. And uh, I, I don't think I could do what I'm doing and at the level I'm doing it uh, without her by my side. So it all ties back. Yeah. <laughs> Not true. Coach, what, uh, what is something that you would say that you're not very good at? Mm -hmm. How do you compensate it or how do you balance out uh, uh, that thing that you're not very good at? I think one thing I've had to work on my whole life is patience, right? And uh, patience with people, pa uh, patience with situations, uh, patience with your family members, patience Hey, patience with your wife, right? <laughs> you say the same thing about me, but you know, it, I think for me, you know, with, with, as I get older and as I mature, I learn, I learn from my experiences. I learn from my past and uh, patience is something I'm constantly working on, whether it's in the workplace, uh, being able to pause, slow down, or my career path, being able to pause, slow down and, and or with my friends, be able to, you know, forgive and have patience or family members um, or, or with certain projects or going back to when I was a student athlete, you know, you can't, you know, things don't just come to anybody and it does, doesn't come easy. And there's a process for all situations. There's a process with every relationship and really focusing on patience with the different things that life throws at you has been uh, a great learning curve for me. And, and when I, focus on uh, and it's one I have to work on on a on a daily basis as well for sure thanks for sharing that coach uh who are the three people in your life who, who you look back and and think have been the most inspirational and I know it might be hard to choose three people yeah. um and and hopefully the the you know the f number four number five don't take offense to the fact that you don't include them here yeah. Um, but, uh, but who are the three most inspirational people in your life and why would you choose those three? Sure. Yeah, it's a great question, but it's a hard question because you, you know, people inspire you for different things and, and, and different things you're looking at. But uh, I think in general, you know, the things that are very important to me, my dad was a huge inspiration in my life and he still is, you know, he had a great career as a, as a football coach. He climbed the mountain in that profession and he climbed the mountain in, um, the television profession now he continues to do a great job he's a, he's a great father he's a great friend uh he's a great brother um he's just he's an all-around great guy and yeah i really uh have been inspired by him my whole life two my wife's been a huge inspiration to me and, and rob I, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to meet her one day but i i hope you get that chance and and um for the many, many reasons uh, that I could go into. Um, it's been a huge inspiration to me. And three, um, there is a, a, one of my industry colleagues named Lee DeLeon. He's, uh, he's currently the deputy AD uh, at uh, University of Louisiana, uh, but he's a guy who's not ashamed of his faith. He shares his faith openly, his, his love for Jesus Christ. And I've always I've always really been inspired by that and his ability to do that with no shame. You know, very fortunate to know Lee. Lee's now been a friend of mine for, for several, well, five, 10 years now. And um, he's had a great career as an athletic administrator. He started ADs for Christ, which was the first organization of its kind uh, to impact athletic administrators in the college realm. Uh, for Christ. Uh, I was very fortunate this year to be invited to the board and uh, we have we have over a hundred and hundred members at this point. It's it's growing daily. Uh, people sharing, you know, uh, ADs at the top institutions in the country from the SEC to the SEC, uh, Big Ten, ACC, you name it, uh, all proclaiming their love for our Lord and Savior and, and, and not ashamed to do it. And we come together. And, but Lee DeLeon, he's been a big inspiration to me for those reasons.
super cool. I didn't know that the the eighties for Christ. That's super cool. Yeah, you know, you you have athletes in action and all these student run organizations, but this is the first organization of its kind in college athletics. And I tell you what, uh, Rob, it's uh, God is moving mightily in this organization and the the. 15 member board that I get to work with. Uh, these are sitting ADs. These are sen- sitting deputy and senior associate ADs all over the country that are doing their best or trying to learn or, or build their relationship with God so they can impact the hundreds and thousands of student athletes in Division One across the country. It's a really amazing organization. It's so true that they have FCA and athletes in action for the athletes, but the administrators need it just as much, right? The support system and the resources and the, the fellowship that comes with that. That's right. And uh, this was a, this was the brainchild of Lee three, three, four years. I think he's been planning this for five years, but we started up officially about three years ago and um, it's, it's been tremendous. It's been growing um, and it's, it's going to be a very, very God willing. It's going to be a very large organization um, as we move forward. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm really honored to be a part of it. So cool. Uh, well, Coach, the, the way that I uh, kind of like to end the, uh, the podcast is, um, you know, if, if you had the chance to go back in time and visit with Tyler Mariucci as a high school student athlete, uh, and, uh, and it's kind of a two-pronged question, one being uh, when you were, you know, kind of a – young student athlete, either a freshman or sophomore, just beginning your athletic career or, uh, or a junior, senior finishing out high school and, and eventually moving off into college. What two pieces of advice do you have at those two stages in time? Hopefully advice that, uh, that the student athletes that are listening to this podcast are able to take to heart. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's uh, so many things I tell myself as a <laughs> 16, 17, 18 year old man, um, that, um, just needed a ton of advice in that <laughs> stage of my life. But I think I'd go back if I had to keep it short and simple. I'd, I'd tell, I would tell Tyler to stay the course and enjoy the ride. So many times we can get caught up in all the challenges and frustrations. And, you know, when you're that age, you know, girl problems, school problems, competitive problems, friendship problems. And, you know, you kind of, you can, you know, when you're that old, you can kind of dwell on those a little bit. But at the end of the day, when I look back at, my high school career, it was so fun. And we did, we did so many great things, you know, as a team, as a school. And, you know, if I, if I could have just stopped and, and smelt the roses a little bit more while I was in the moment, I think that's what I would tell myself. Um, you know, that competitive drive, you know, can get you sometimes. And I just, I just, I would go back and tell myself, hey, stay the course and enjoy the ride. For sure. I thought for sure you were going to say something about, uh, you know, don't, don't go for the bleach tipped uh, hairdo or, or, <laughs> or something like that. The, the well, I would definitely tell myself that too. I mean, I would tell myself 20 different things, that being one of them, that, that photo. And I know you're probably going to bring it up on this YouTube channel. You're going to bring that up. And that photo still gets pulled up today, wherever I'm at. Yeah. Uh, it gives people a good laugh. It gives me a good laugh. For uh, sure. That was an, uh, the Charlie Wiedemeyer all-star football game photo, and it was okay. in the middle of the summer. I was growing my hair long. I had it bleached, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to take a photo here. So I, I tried spiking it, and it just turned out to be this, this wild photo that uh, is, is, you know, I'm probably going to have to see the rest of my life. But, yeah. Um, Yep, that's what I would say, Rob. Well, those those uh, those that are watching on YouTube will uh, will forever see that photo memorialized right here. So, <laughs> uh, okay. so uh, well, Coach, thanks for uh, thanks for being on the Warrior Rewind. Before I let you go, um, real quick, if people want to uh, to follow along on social media or, or kind of get in touch so that they can they can continue to follow your your journey, your quest for excellence. Uh, Go ahead and, and let us know what your your social media uh, handles are, Instagram. Yeah, thanks, Rob. You, you can follow me at, uh, at Tyler Mariucci on Twitter, and uh, you can also get in touch with me on LinkedIn. I try to respond uh, to everyone that has a question or, or yeah. as, aspiring 
uh, people in the industry, aspiring kids, interns, people that are in the profession, or people looking in to get into it. Uh, I try to uh, make time for everyone that's that's reaching out. So um, if you have a question or, or want to follow me on those two platforms, again, LinkedIn, I'm Tyler Mariucci, and Twitter at Tyler Mariucci. I'd be happy to help you help you in any way I can. Yes, love it. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, thanks again for uh, for being on the show. Uh, stay safe during uh, shelter in place, mm -hmm. and uh, good luck to uh, to the San Diego State Aztecs uh, this uh, upcoming school year. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Great talking to you.